This week on TGC News, Springfield has a new lightweight bolt gun, PSA goes bigger in the middle, and a product that is sure to piss off the ATF. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things that you actually care about. My name is John Patton. If you're new here, do me a favor. Please hit that subscribe button. It actually does help quite a bit, and I would really appreciate it. Let's jump right into the news once again. First up is another new one from Springfield. They had the Echelon recently, and now this. It's a new version of their 2020 bolt-action rifles called the Redline. Essentially, this is a lightweight version of the gun. It comes with a Graybow Trekker stock, which is pretty light, and has a level built into it and a couple other trick features. Then you have a carbon fiber wrap barrel, chambered in either 308 or 65 Creedmoor, with either a 16 or 20 inch barrel. And then there's a radial break, yay. And in the heart is a Trigger Tech field trigger, which is adjustable from two and a half to five pounds. These guns, carry a 0.75 MOA guarantee, three-quarter MOA. The weight is right at six pounds, which isn't the lightest out there, but it's definitely on the lighter end of things. MSRP is 2300 Now, we've seen this trend of lightweight hunting rifles continuing over the last few years from all kinds of brands, from cheap to expensive, but I'm curious just how many of you would grab this for that purpose over others in your arsenal. Sound off in the comments and talk all about it. The Alias by Neomag offers unparalleled concealment, strength, and modularity. Using one of their universal holster clips and receivers, you can mount your holstered gun to just about anything. Your belt, your vertex bag or safe, your nightstand or desk, or even without a belt at all using their new beltless receiver. Click your holster into the next evolution of everyday carry. To get yourself a free universal holster clip, when you buy your first receiver, use our code TGC alias over at theneomag.com. Next up this week, Palmetto State Armory has expanded their line of Sabre rifles to include AR-10. For those out of the loop, this is PSA's attempt at a sort of really good mid-tier rifle. As with the AR-15s in this line, these can be had with either forged or billet receivers, and on the expensive side of things, only get up to 1,350 credits for this 13.7 inch barrel 308, and then goes down to 200 less for the same gun with forged receivers. There are, of course, a few other versions, but there's so much overlap, I'm not going to bother deep diving into this all on this show. Let's jump into some accessory news. We've got a bunch this week. First up, SIG has released a new open emitter optic series that they say will mount on any optic ready pistol. It's called Romeo X and it comes in two flavors, regular, got the regular one and the compact version. Both are based on the M17 optic that was developed for the DoD. They also have a very low deck height, so it's pretty pretty tame back there, and it has a built-in sight, which is really nice to have. I like that. You can also switch between a circle dot, regular dot, or circle reticles, and 15 brightness settings. The question is, would you take this over the plethora of other really good pistol sights out there? That's a tough call. Now, before I hit you with something that is sure to piss off the ATF, let me hit you with the deal of the week. I actually have word from Frankfurt Arsenal that they finally got some of their new X10 progressive reloading presses that people were super pumped about at GunCon. A whole bunch of people were asking. They're in stock on the website today. The day you're seeing this today, they are on the website. And if you use our link, that one down there, you'll get an extra 20% off of their other gear and accessories. You have to use our link to get that discount. Okay, moving on. Next up this week is something really unique. Now, despite the outfit he borrowed from a Hunger Games Extra, Hoffman Tactical has released one of the most interesting gun parts I've seen in a while called the Super Safety Active Trigger System. Essentially, this would replace your regular AR safety and convert it to a push button style with three positions. All the way to one side is safe, all the way to the other side is fire, and in the middle is where the magic happens. Using a lever that fits into a slot on the top of the safety barrel and a tiny bit of grinding and sanding on the actual trigger portion of the trigger group combined with a rounded over safety detent the center position takes force imparted from the bcg as it travels back and forth and resets the trigger allowing it to be pulled again and the result is 
Fantastic, just look at it. And on top of that, this is a 3D printable part, meaning you can make this at home. Now, in Hoffman's video, he claims that this is not a machine gun due to the single function of a trigger portion of the definition. However, years ago, Adam Kraut and I filmed high speed video with a bump stock showing exactly the same thing, same principles at least. See that trigger break really clear. Look at that reset. You just you see the reset. Yeah, you just Wham. see it. Just walk, yep. it, it it's, it's, a, it's a very definitive movement. Our video was submitted as supporting evidence against the bump stock ban, and they didn't seem to give a sh about the truth that we showed. What I'm gonna do now is fire it again, one-handed, holding the trigger to the rear, not letting go to show you that it in fact fires one round per function of the trigger. One round, not a machine gun. To me, this sounds like a slightly different take on a forced reset trigger, which we know has been an absolute show with ATF. With reports of ATF going door to door over people merely Googling the force reset trigger, I can't say whether or not this is a good idea. It's a really tough spot to be in. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. And, and guys, since I know you love it so much,